Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Five days before the Passover, the great crowd had come to the festival. They heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches from the palm trees and they went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel! And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along the way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that, joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.
who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and serve others. Today is the beginning of Holy Week, Throughout the week, you are invited to participate in a multitude of worship experiences as we approach the empty tomb. Monday, Thursday, we worship together online on YouTube at 7 p.m. all together. We will hear first-person accounts of the last days of Jesus' life. We recall the prophetic scripture that described the last moments in Christ's life. And symbolically, we strip the altar, removing all pyramids and candles and cross, leaving the altar bare and the lights dim as we prepare for Good Friday. And on Friday at 7 p.m., again online on YouTube, YouTube, we worship together approaching the cross and the crucifixion of our Lord with solemn hearts and minds. And we'll listen to scripture and sing songs of lament and witness the darkness of this most sacred night. The Easter vigil begins again 7 p.m. on Saturday um, on YouTube. And this worship experience will recall all of the stories of faith that have led us from the garden to the wilderness to the valley of dry bones to the cross and the empty tomb. And we focus on God's redeeming work throughout Scripture and through the waters of baptism. And then on Easter, you can worship from home online on Easter Sunday at 8.30 a.m. with a festival worship experience to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Or we're excited to return to in-person worship on Easter, 11 o'clock in the outdoor chapel. Please make your reservations online at aplc.org. All are welcome. Now, this coming Saturday at 10 o'clock is our Easter egg hunt. So bring your young ones for a safe and socially distanced Easter egg hunt. And the only thing you need to bring with you besides your young ones is an Easter basket and a mask to wear so we can serve others. Let's now turn our attention to the hearing of God's word. A reading from Isaiah chapter 50, beginning at verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life, Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
A reading from Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that as at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Hey friends, I brought with me a little toy that I like to play with, and it's Play-Doh. Do you have any Play-Doh at home? Isn't it fun to play with Play-Doh? Because you can create anything. You can make animals, you can make plants, you can make a dinner party. You can create so many cool things with Play-Doh. We have uh, a lot of tools at our house where we can make like spaghetti out of it. You can move things around. You can cut it off. And Play-Doh comes in so many different colors. And there's all kinds of different tools that you can use for it. It's a lot of fun to play with. But did you know that this was originally not meant to be a toy? I know. I was shocked when I found out. Originally, Play-Doh was a uh, moldy type clay that they used to take tar and, and, and soot off of the walls whenever they would remove wallpaper because people used to heat their homes with coal and it would leave, you know, these dark spots behind the wallpaper. And when they changed it out, they used this type of putty to take it off. Well, when people started using natural gas, there was no more dark spots and there was no more need for this putty. And this company had all of this stuff sitting around and they thought, well, it's safe to touch. Maybe kids would want to play with it. So they started adding colors to it, and there you go. We have this new Play-Doh. Well, it's not new anymore, but it's a, lot of, it's a pretty interesting little story, though, that goes with it, which got me thinking about Palm Sunday, because we wave these palm branches. And we do so because we're excited. We're excited that it's Palm Sunday, and we're saying, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Because this is the day that Jesus rides into Jerusalem, and he's on this donkey, and there's all these people that are surrounded around him, and everybody's so excited because the king has come, and they are so very excited. But the palm branch has a little bit different history than just a place of excitement. And we're going to talk about that in today's sermon. So if you've got some Play-Doh at home, go ahead and, and, and take it out and play with that Play-Doh. If you've got a palm branch to color, go ahead and color that as we discover more about what God has given us through the palm branch. Amen. My next door neighbor has this palm tree. I can see it right outside my kitchen window. He's pruned it over the years. He's taking great care of it. His late wife wanted it, and she passed away a few years back. And now this tree has become kind of a living memorial to her. So when the winter storm happened, I was really worried about this tree because the snow was so thick on the branches. The, 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 they were just drooping down so far. I was shocked they never fell off. And then when the snow melted, all the branches turned brown and I found myself grieving that this beloved tree was not going to make it. And then the days that followed, I saw him outside just kind of, you know, looking at that tree, pondering about it. And we got to talking and he told me that he was going to have to, you know, trim back all the dead parts to see if the stump would survive. And so I watched him over the next few days cut off those dead branches. And he began to shave pack all of the, the dead parts of the stump 
And what was once this like regal looking palm tree now resembled a like rotten pineapple with a bunch of branches strewn all around it. Well, I'm happy to report that the palm tree survived the storm and is already starting to sprout some small little shoots. And I saw my neighbor standing outside this past week, and he was just smiling as he stood there. And I thought, look at that. From palm branches to death to resurrection to new life. I don't think I'm ever going to look at that tree the same way again. Let us pray. Holy One, grace us with your presence as we enter Holy Week. Watch over us as we wave our palm branches. Guard our hearts as we betray and deny. Grant us forgiveness as we crucify. Strengthen us to live lives that reflect the glory of your resurrection. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So palm trees and palm branches are found scattered all through the biblical narrative. And they have a place of importance long before John mentions them falling under the hooves of a young donkey. And they're first mentioned in the story of the Exodus. Moses and the Israelites had just made their way through the Red Sea, and God provides them a place to rest where there are these fresh springs, and they're all surrounded by this multitude of, of, of palm trees, giving them a, a place to camp under. So they all began their journey from slavery to freedom under the shade and the safety of the palm tree. And while they were traveling across on the wilderness, God established and appointed festivals. One of those was called the Festival of the Booths. Now, part of this festival was for them to go out and gather up palm branches. And they were going to construct these booths or these huts, these places for them to stay for seven days to remind them for all generations that God brought them safely out of the land of Egypt. And years later, as God's children returned from the Babylonian exile, they celebrated this same festival. And Nehemiah, the prophet, instructed them to go out and collect palm branches and build these booths. So they would remember God's deliverance from slavery to new life in the promised land. And about a hundred years before Jesus ever rode that young donkey, the temple was desecrated by this evil, devilish king. And the people rose up to take back the temple and overthrow this king. And this is called the Maccabean Revolt. And they entered into the temple afterwards. And the Jewish people carried with them and waved them these palm branches. When we hear about the festival of the booths in our gospels, it serves as a historic connection to that Maccabean Revolt and the exile and exodus. And part of the practice was not only to build booths, but to bundle up palm branches and to wrap them around with silver and gold cords. And they would carry these branches with them all day long. They would go into the synagogue, whether they would walk around in prayer, they would carry them and they would walk around the temple, around the altar in the temple. And then they would say the word of their ancestors. They would shout, Hosanna, we beg of you, save us. Hosanna. And they would celebrate the redeeming and the saving work of God, the new life that is offered, the freedom from the bondage that spans their entire ancestral story. And then in the book of Revelations, the palm branch returns. And here we see it connected to all of those that have been martyred for their faith. The multitude standing before the lamb, before the throne, wearing robes of white and in their hands a bundle of palm branches. When we are celebrating this Palm Sunday, it's more than the beginning of Holy Week. As Jesus makes that triumphant entry into Jerusalem, it's really the middle of the story. It's really the middle of our story. And on this Palm Sunday, we hear from the Gospel of John. And by the way, John is the only gospel writer that actually includes the palm branch in his story. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those synoptic gospel writers, 
They spent an awful lot of time talking about the disciples going to get a cult and getting it for Jesus and how to do this and when they got it and what they were going to say. But John connects Jesus riding into Jerusalem to the saving grace of God made known throughout Scripture with the palm branch and with these shouts of Hosanna because the festival that Jesus and all of this multitude that they're traveling to is the Passover, not the festival of booths. Isn't it something that they would respond this way? And it's fascinating because the multitude here is surrounding this new temple, Jesus, with their palm branches. And they're shouting out that same word that their ancestors shouted out. Hosanna, save us, we beg. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. See, there's something about this Jesus what he has said, the things that he's done, the miracles and the signs. And all of this has moved this multitude of people to recall that revolt, to recall the exile, to recall exodus and the saving and redeeming work that God has made known through this one man. And they believe that this Jesus may just about bring new life. And so they wave their palm branches. They carry their bundles of palm branches and they shout out, Hosanna, save us, we pray. And if you keep on reading in our gospel, you'll see that the Pharisees have something to say about this too. These are the leaders of the temple, the Pharisees. They're the chief organizers for all the festivals, making sure that these traditions go on from generation to generation. And they are witnessing something historic taking place. And they're baffled because hosannas and, and palm branches happening at the Passover. What's going on? And they look at each other and they say, we can't do anything here. The whole world has gone after this man. Something amazing is happening here. The saving work of God, the recognition of freedom from bondage, the celebration of a festival is made known not with, with only huts or bundles or even inside the temple, but through Jesus, the new temple, through Jesus, the new covenant that Jeremiah spoke of, through Jesus, the new life offered through this new Passover lamb. We are at a pivotal moment in Scripture here where the past and the present and the future story meet together through a palm branch, which connects this story to our ancestor story, to God's story, to our story. And even though we may not be able to enter this temple with our palm branches waving, and even though our hosannas may only be heard by our neighbors or our family members, through this simple branch, we are connected to God's story of redemption, of freedom, of new life. Because it didn't stop with the Pharaoh. It didn't stop with the Babylonians or the Maccabees or the Pharisees. And it does not stop because of COVID or insurrections or mass shootings. Hosanna. God is right here. God dwells within us. God's story is within us. It's alive within each and every one of us. So let's prune back those dead branches. Let's bundle up and build with the branches of faith that are just aching to sprout from within. And let's shout the Hosanna of our ancestors, celebrating the saving nature of God. Hosanna, rejoicing in the new life offered through Christ. Hosanna! And wave our palm branches in jubilation of the coming kingdom and the eternal life where we will gather with the multitude surrounding the throne and the lamb wearing white with palm branches in our hands. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. If
find the Lord of Lords, who is the great I am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty, we will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness, we will worship him. Lord of heaven, Lord of earth, He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe, all praise to Him. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, one in one God. God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came, came down, down from, from heaven, heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation, awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them, that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer illness or need our prayers, especially Joy Cox, Sophie Mayorga, Shelley Clemens, Lene Sorensen, and those we now name aloud are in our hearts. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death, sustain doctors, nurses, and hospice workers. 
Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, and all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. If you're at home right now, go ahead, send a text, give someone a phone call, but share Christ's peace with one another. Don, peace be with you. Shall be peace. We are at the beginning of Holy Week, where we witness the final days of Jesus' earthly life, and this is the week where he serves others by washing feet, breaking bread, and ultimately sacrificing his life for each and every one of us. Throughout Scripture, Jesus shows a humble servant's heart. As we heed the call to be Christ-like in all we say and do, we give ourselves to others. Your financial gifts bless so many through abiding presence, fulfilling our mission to serve others. Thank you for your continued generosity. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have blessed us with our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our communities, and the resources of this earth. Lead us and guide us to use these gifts in accordance with your will, for the sake of the one who is with us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing 
in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.